Guys, I'm going to start with you, Reggie. Crazy yeah. to think that all three of these guys will be bust. It is crazy to think that, but it's not far off because uh, I feel like when you look at the three quarterbacks in their situations that they've gone into, I feel like Kyler Murray right now is maybe set up for failure quicker than the other two quarterbacks, Daniel Jones and Haskins, because he has to play right now, right? And because he's going to a team that they don't have a ton of weapons. They got a head coach, first-time rookie head coach, who you just alluded to, who struggled at the college level. So there's a lot of figuring it out that's going to go on. And I just don't know, as a rookie quarterback, you want to be trying to figure it out with your coaching staff. Uh, I go back to my time in Miami when we drafted Ryan Tannehill. And I thought maybe the worst thing that they did was make they, they put him into the starting role too quick. Because at the college level, he didn't have a ton of experience, like Kyler Murray, uh, like Dwayne Haskins. And they put him into the starting role too fast. And his confidence, start, they started to chip away at his confidence because uh, he didn't play as great as probably he wanted to, right? And so I feel like as a rookie quarterback, confidence is everything. And, I, and right now, with, when I look at Kyler Murray, I just he's set up right now to fail because he doesn't have a ton of weapons around him. It doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, you, you come into this league as a rookie quarterback. First off, you have to understand how the league is set up and how college football is set up. See, when I came into the league, it was set up as a trickle-down, like, tri like, like Reagan, uh, Reaganomics, right? Yeah. Trickle-down. Mm -hmm. The NFL affected college, which has affected high school. Mm -hmm. It's trickle up now. High school has affected college, which is starting to permeate the National Football League. But there's still a large difference between college football and the spread offenses that you're asked to, to participate in and what they're doing in the National Football League level. Here's the other thing. You mentioned it, and I think it's a great point. Experience, as J.C. Penney once said, is the best teacher of all, right? <laughs> yeah. Experience is. You don't have a lot of experience. And oftentimes what happens to you in the college game is you have a lot of success, not because of study habits, not because of you really understand football. It's because you're such a gifted athlete. Mm -hmm. And then you get in the NFL and you start to realize, shoot, everybody's, everybody's really, good, really good, right? Everybody's, everybody's really, really good. good. <laughs> and I think for, for these guys, the game is about the neck up. In the pro football, in pro football, your def your default mechanism better be from your neck up. Mm -hmm. In college football, your default mechanism can be athletic. Mm -hmm. It can be your athleticism, I, and, I, and I think that's an issue. I like Reggie's point about because I think Kyler Murray's the most talented of these three. Yep. Sure, let's say we can all agree, but he's also I think, and people haven't given this a lot of thought like Reggie has. He's stepping into the most dangerous situation so dangerous. because that organization is permeated right now with desperation. Mm -hmm. If this doesn't work, Steve Kime is toast. Mm -hmm. He's hired, uh, he's the general manager president. He's hired Cliff Kingsbury, who failed at Texas Tech. The whole league thinks this is a bad hire. There's pressure on Cliff Kingsbury. Sure. Now he's bringing in an offensive system from the college game, and we've drafted a quarterback to run this specific offense that works and scored points in the college game but didn't win a lot of games. Yeah. We're bringing that to the NFL. I think that kind of desperation that's pervasive throughout the Arizona organization is unhealthy for a young quarterback. I, I would agree with you 100%. And, and, again, like I alluded to, not having enough weapons around him. You go into a situation where you don't have a veteran presence in front of you. Like, I attribute a lot of my early success to Deuce McAllister because he was a veteran in front of me. He showed me how to get it done on and off the football field for two, three years. And I was able to go in and take a lot of what I learned from him and then implement that into my, into my own game. That's why I said Dwayne Haskins, you know, he has Case Keenum. Alex Smith is still there. Colt McCoy. Um, Daniel Jones has Eli Manning. And he has guys he can learn from. And he doesn't have to play yeah. right now. Kyler Murray has to play right now. Oh, no. Steve Kimes announced today his opening day quarterback starter. It's Kyler Murray. <laughs> the, the, the guys, I don't know if he's, they had that rookie minicamp or anything. They ain't I don't think he's yet. done anything yet. He's already been, and look, he's the number one pick. We expected him to start, but Baker Mayfield went number one. He didn't start right away. They're throwing this kid into the fire sure, in because, May 2nd. Because you have, to under, you have to understand how the system is set up. Because the system now, with the last collective bargaining agreement, says we're not investing that much. Like, would any of these guys been first-round picks if you had the 2010 system where you had to pay $75, $80 million, mm, guaranteed all. money? Not at all. They're not even first-round picks, yeah. right? Now that you can get away with paying them $20, $30 million, and you say, hey, I spread it out over five years because I've got the option, yeah. like, I'm really not deep. 
This yeah. does not hamstring my franchise. Yeah. So the guy who has the best chance of these guys, because I think he's the guy that's going to sit the bench for a while, is Daniel Jones. Mm -hmm. To learn the NFL game, he's got the best opportunity to actually absorb. See, just because you play a pro sport doesn't make you a professional. And when we come in as young players, you talked about Deuce McAllister. Mm -hmm. You have to learn the NFL game. Yeah. Not only that, you have to learn how to study. Yeah. You have to learn how to prepare. It's completely, <clears throat> it's a different animal. And so all of a sudden, you're going to throw these guys in, and there's a difference between watching film and studying film. And you get to the point where you're just like, it's like watching a movie, as opposed to really understanding and studying what you're looking at. And look, I'm going off memory here, but Washington signed Case Keenum, correct? Yes. And correct. so I believe, yeah, they, they traded for Case Keenum. I think Dwayne Haskins has a shot at sitting at least for six, seven games and learning some things, because I, I guarantee you Daniel Snyder really wants Dwayne Haskins to succeed. The last guy he was all in on, Robert Griffin III, mm -hmm. that blew up in his face. Mm -hmm. Maybe they put too much on him too early, blew his head up. I think they'll take a slower approach with Haskins. I'm just not sure. Again, the, the book is pretty clear. He had a limited amount of college experience. Yeah. That doesn't translate well to the NFL. I've never heard any draft pick beat up the way Daniel Jones has been beat up by the people that study the draft. <laughs> He's, you know, Todd McShay is just out sure. there. This guy is a backup quarterback. I can't discount all the experts that watch this. Yeah. I, I'm just not sure if, if, if he has the tools to be yeah. a successful quarterback. I think, I think, well, I think he has the athleticism. I mean, arm talent's another question. Decision-making, like I said, from the neck up. You talk about Haskins, unbelievable unbelievable what he did, but you always have to look back and say, how come you couldn't beat out JT Barrett? Yeah. Right? And you threw 50 touchdowns, and I get it, and it's an impressive, it's an impressive body of work. But then I watched you play Michigan and hang 60 on them, and they're supposed to be your number one rival in Big Ten football, and that wasn't a like-athlete-to-like-athlete -like -athlete game. I mean, you are, you're, pl you're playing against a JV team when you're talking about the difference in athletes from, I'm sorry, from Michigan to Ohio State. Yeah. It wasn't even close. And so like, when, you get into, when you get into a competition where everybody is strong, everybody is fast, everybody is, a, a, is athletic, and then some guys, you know, from the neck up, they understand the game. Yeah. You, like you, you get it's it's yeah. shocking. You get wampy jawed. That you know the, that was the biggest difference for me. The biggest adjustment I had to make was because the college level, I could just outrun everybody, right? I could outrun people yeah. to the sideline. I could make a move them in the open field and and create my own space. When I, I remember my first preseason game, we played the Cowboys, and Demarcus Ware had me one on one on a, just a regular swing route, right? And he was running step for step with me. I thought I had an easy touchdown. He ended up tackling. This is on like the five yard line. I didn't score the touchdown, and so that to me was my first introduction into the speed of the game. And this is just how smart let me, guys let me work. Ask you real quick, because I've always wondered this, and people don't the people discount this. How big a difference was it with the hash marks, oh, so that you huge. could get you could get that <laughs> width, and you could beat people to the edge and stuff? It's a, like it's a completely, completely different, different game. game. Yeah, it's a completely different game, and I think you alluded to it as well. Is there are a lot of, everybody in NFL is smart. I mean, everybody's fast, big, strong, so you're not going to get away with just overpowering people or outrunning people. It's the, the here, the, in, in the head, the mental right. side of it where guys well, really... I, I, yes, and I think for quarterbacks, it's not just they're all big, fast, and strong. They're more assignment sound because they're not studying basket weaving in their spare mm -hmm. time. They're all in on football most of the day. I'm not saying everybody's a genius in the NFL, but when that's all you do yeah. from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m., mm -hmm. you're more assignment sound, and that a lot of times catches up with the quarterbacks. Quickly, I just want to ask this question. Are NFL teams too desperate right now Ooh. to find their franchise quarterback? Is that what's driving these reaches early in the draft? Well, yeah, they're they're desperate, but again, because of because we as players, you know, we can't we don't have enough backbone to stand up to the ownership. Yeah. We don't. We never have. I'm part of that. I'm I'm guilty as charged. Agree. Okay, agree. that we gave in when when I was asked to to buy the players' association about the rookie wage scale. I said to them, "You guys are crazy if you sign into this." Mm -hmm. And they said, "Why? Because we don't like giving all this money to rookies and." And then those rookies, you know, don't perform. And, and, it, and, and so that, that was their theory. And I go, if you think whatever money you save on rookies is going to be passed to the veterans, you guys are stupid. Mm -hmm. It's like this bar I used to hang out at, Chilkoot Charlie's in Anchorage, Alaska. 
their model was where we cheat the other guy and pass the savings on to you, right? <laughs> like, if you think the owners are going to save millions of dollars on a rookie wage scale and disperse it like, you know, like yeah. good fairies to mm-hmm. the rest of the players, like, you're, you're stupid. <laughs> but we signed it, and now you can draft a quarterback in the first round. You can chase a quarterback. You, yep. can, you can overdraft a guy. Yep. And you're like, it really doesn't hamstring our franchise like yep. it did when you took a Sam Bradford and had to pay him 50 or $60 Ooh. million. Dollars or so, like, the Rams it's, still it's different. That one. Right. It's, it's <laughs> different. It, it is different, and I agree with you 100% that uh, I think teams are too desperate to try to find their franchise quarterbacks right now. 